Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here. I am joined by Diana Giles with Skyline IT Management, and we are finishing up part three of my chat sessions with a 365 guru. Diana, how are we doing? Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, folks, what we've been doing uh, over the last couple of segments is talking about Microsoft 365, moving clients to the cloud, talking about Azure, SharePoint, all those things. And if for some reason you started out of order, you want to go back, this is part three. Uh, part one, we just kind of talked about, you know, getting started, the things you need to know, the licenses, the difference between a standard, a basic, and a premium license. And then we talked about the foundations, things you want to kind of prep before you get clients uh, started in that cloud migration. And today we're going to kind of finish it up. But before we do that, I want to let you know that some of you, if you have been following, you're probably saying, I have questions. So we're going to have an opportunity for you to get those questions answered. So July 5th, at 8 p.m. Eastern, we are going to get, uh, I should edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have a fourth session, but it's going to be a live session. It is going to be one of the IT Business Podcast live shows, and we will have an opportunity for you to answer or ask some of those questions. We'll answer. We'll do a little recap and stuff, but get a little feedback. Some of you may say, hey, I think I have a different way of doing that. Send that in by email or join the show and throw it into the chat and we'll we'll talk about it. So July 5th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Listen, it's going to be the day after Independence Day. Some of you should be home resting because you've enjoyed a big, fat Independence Day brunch or lunch or dinner. So you should be home. Join the show. All right. Giles, how have you... How have, uh, how do you think these sessions have fared so far? Good, good. Uh, I mean, I hope, you know, I really want to encourage um, the IT providers out there that, that maybe haven't dipped their toe in the 365 water yet to, to do so, and at least, you know, kind of look at how they can expand their business by, uh, you know, getting clients that are looking to a more modern solution and going to the cloud. I will say, I've actually gotten a few clients specifically because they wanted to go to the cloud and their current provider wasn't willing to do that for them. So mm -hmm. it could be a way to differentiate yourself. All right. So uh, I'm going to put her website back up here for those that are watching the video, uh, Skyline IT Management. So if you are one of those providers that uh, I probably should, I need some help, you may want to reach out to Diana and get more in-depth information on how you can do that, or maybe she can help and uh, get you guys going there. I should also say that these video sessions, yes, they've been brief. Yes, we've tried not to get stuck in the weeds because you certainly can. Uh, Diane and I are talking about doing another series down the road, uh, going a little bit more in depth with some of the things uh, that we've talked about. Uh, Azure AD Sync, conditional access, we'll talk about that later. But, Dinah, let's go back and talk about one of the things that you mentioned that, you know, you're actually picking your clients based on whether or not they want to go to the cloud. I mean, is that is that 100% true? It really is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, um, that's where I see technology moving. And uh, I'm not saying that I wouldn't have a client that, you know, had uh, a server on-prem or even, you know, maybe we didn't take everything to the cloud. Maybe we, you know, deploy a Synology, you know, just because of the sheer amount of data. But uh, definitely clients that are going to be, uh, you know, willing to use Microsoft Business Premium and be in the cloud those are, are my focus. And really that's, those are, you know, the kind of clients I've gotten. All of my most recent clients are 
they've wanted to do that, you know, and that's why they contacted me. So I, I see the need out there and I really see it as such a good solution for so many small businesses. One thing, you know, I did kind of briefly mention the licensing, it's one to 300. And it really is a way that even the tiniest of businesses can have such a, a robust solution that really gives them the kind of security that used to only be available in the enterprise world. Uh, so you can have like a one, two, three person, you know, uh, attorney or CPA uh, or some other entrepreneur uh, that has, you know, maybe maybe they don't even office, you know, they're, they're always traveling and, and they have just a, they're a perfect solution for a cloud office. I mean, a perfect uh, business for a cloud office. So think outside the box on who, uh, you might be able to serve, I guess, is is uh, what I'm saying. Okay. Now, when it comes to, you you mentioned two things, the client that wants to go to the cloud or the client that is willing to purchase the premium license. But when it comes to, like, criteria, do you actually have, like, a list of things that you're looking for in the client that makes them a good candidate? Yeah, I mean, you know, that they do not have a line of business app that forces you to have them on a server. I mean, you know, that's always, um, that a lot of times that's, you know, one of the constraints. That's the killer. And like, I'm sorry, like you. <laughs> that's the killer. All my, all my attorneys yeah. like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Right. But see, even, uh, you know, some of my most recent client attorneys, they use um, Clio. So it's cloud, app, you know, so maybe they're interested in, in making that switch. Maybe they're not. But um, it's something that even if you don't make the complete switch, you can have a hybrid situation. And so then you get the benefits of using, you know, the, the server for the, the app. Uh, and possibly some file storage, but then you get everything else that Microsoft 365, you know, offers. All right. Now you mentioned the hybrid scenario again, which I think some of my clients are going to start to fall into that as they have their line of business apps move to the cloud. I mentioned some of my clients that have a ton of local data and we'll have to figure that out as it goes, but we've kind of glossed over Active Directory Sync and this hybrid model. So let me just quickly go back and ask you, if I've got a client, let's say there are 150 users, seven locations, <laughs> and I want to start to move them there, what are the steps that I would do? Because these are clients that, listen, they're on hosted exchange. They're not even on 365 at all. So... <laughs> I've got to move well, them. Well, you got to get them off that first. <laughs> um, but is Definitely. that the type of scenario where I would, you know, maybe start them with a hybrid? And would it be Active Directory Sync? Yeah. If you're going to do, you know, there's there's Azure AD Connect and then there's Azure AD Sync. Sync is where you're going to continue that hybrid situation where, you know, uh, and you can determine in, in, in through that process. I mean, it's a it's a lengthy process. I mean, and, and, you know, you end up in kind of a wizard situation where you're deploying this tool that's going to, to take care of these syncing, but you decide on, you know, which end uh, are the changes going to govern? Is it going to be the Azure AD side or, or is the server going to govern? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you have to take into account, but then you could also, if you were just wanting to migrate somebody away from the server, it can also be, you know, Azure AD Connect can be a one-time, uh, you know, sync just to save you from having to, you know, import and, and do the, you know, or a manual method, which you wouldn't want to do <clears throat> with 150 users, certainly. So there's a lot of ways to accomplish it. There's there's even an Azure AD, um, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, I think it's um, Active Directory migration tool. It's not really recommended, but it is, you know, there's, there are a lot of variety of ways to do it. <clears throat> it you mainly just, it's going to matter what your current client situation is and then what you want the end result to look like. Are they going to be totally cloud only or are they going to stay there with the server? <clears throat> All right. Let me ask one weird question. Well, it's not weird, but it's, <laughs> it didn't fall in our discussion 
quite the way that uh, I thought it would. But so that client, 150 users, they're going to look at the cost to transition to premium licenses. Mm -hmm. And it's going to it's going to be pretty substantial for them. We're talking, what was it, 28 bucks or something like that, uh, depending on if they do the NCE or legacy um, per user per month. So for them, that'll be, you know, a consideration. Most clients that are smaller, probably, you know, they might look at price as one thing, but then they may not when you look at all that you're getting uh, with this. So what are some of the things that you tell people when they look at the cost and see that jump in their 365 license? Right. Well, for one thing, you can look at the cost of whatever their last server was and what the cost of, you know, the, when it's time to replace that server, what that's going to be, because those are certainly not inexpensive. Uh, then, you know, also there's the um, just the issues that come with a server. You know, there's a lot of maintenance and, and things like that that have to be done as well. And that adds to the, the cost that they're having to pay you as well. Uh, the licensing, you know, I would suggest for somebody who's maybe um, not sure that you do month to month at first, but then take advantage of the 20% discount, you know, uh, for the annual commitment. And I usually, most of my clients will pay for that, you know, a year in advance and just do the annual because it saves them 20%. Right. So that's a significant amount, but maybe when you're first starting out, you do the month to month just for a few months until everything gets ironed out. You, you know, make sure that you are going to indeed stick with the business premium. The licensing is going to be like you want it. And, and then you, you know, make that year commitment. Right. And they can make that change at any time. Right. And that's the nice thing is, you know, you can swap out licenses here and there, you know, that's why, you know, until you're certain you want to just do the monthly licenses, uh, and now, you know, if you have absolute commitment and you know that that's what you're going to do, well, go ahead and buy the year. And might as well save the money. All right. So I want to do one other thing. Okay. When you were showing in our last session your tenant, your My demo uh, tenant. Your yeah. demo tenant. I noticed in the upper left hand corner, your icons looked a little different than my icons. Can I ask you about that? Sure, yes. Um, I have a little logo up there. Um, let me share my screen and uh, show, you about, show you about branding and also the customization that is available and the reasoning also behind these things because it's not just about the looks, although it does, you know, um, it does look nice, but Oh, okay. I think I did the right one. There we go. Okay. All right. So this is like a, yep. your own customization that you did inside the portal. Yes. Now there's two areas of customization. First, now this is the from the main admin center. So it's like admin.microsoft.com. Oh, and then there was one thing I got to thinking that I took it for granted, because it's like literally the first thing you have to do when you set up a, a tenant, and that is you have to get the domain set up. That's that's the absolute first thing. We were talking about foundations, right. but I didn't mention that because I was almost thinking everybody already knew that, but you know they might not. So that is the first thing you have to do is set up the domain. That requires you to have access to the DNS settings, or at least have access to someone who has access to the DNS settings for your client. So I did, I did want to mention that really quick. Okay. Um, but back to the customization and branding. Um, under the organizational profile section, there's the custom themes, which is actually where that logo that you're talking about up here in the corner, um, that is where that is. And so you can, you know, change your theme and that is what the user experience is going to be when they're in the browser in Microsoft Office. So that's one area. And that's that really is more kind of an aesthetics thing. It's just kind of nice, you know, to do. Uh, I like to customize and make things, you know, as, as um, 
pleasing as possible for my clients. So that's something we always do. The other thing is the company branding. And that really, it's also nice. Um, it gives a nice, you know, aesthetic for your clients, but it really is um, more about security than uh, not maybe more about it, but it certainly is about security. And that's the main reason I do it. And you're so, talking about customizing for each of your clients, not not like your branding across all clients. Yes. Um, thank you. Yes. Each client's customization for their tenant and their Microsoft experience. And I'll show you how that works. Um, I'll show you where it is first. So it's down here. This is from Azure AD. This is, it's now... Um, Intra or Entra, I don't even know how to say it, but this is the Azure AD portal now. Um, I, you know, I'm still learning my way around this because it's changed so much, but if you ever have trouble, you just search and you can find it. Um, so company branding is all the way down here under user experience. And so this is where you can customize all of the various colors, logos, that kind of thing. If you, basically, this is what it looks like when you start and you would do the um, edit for the default sign-in experience. So what this does is allows them to recognize that when they log in to their, uh, you know, Microsoft account, they're going to have a certain look and feel to it, or it's going to have a certain look and feel. And so with the credential harvesting being what it is right now, it's just running rampant. Um, you know, you're going to want them to be able to know that they are logging, they truly are logging into their uh, Microsoft account and not one that, you know, a bad actor has put up, you know, to, to harvest their Microsoft credentials. So here is what the Microsoft login looks like. Can you when refresh I, your browser there? I'm seeing a white screen. Over. Oh, whoops. Okay. Let me go back. Uh, are you still seeing a white screen? I am. Okay. Well, uh, oh, you know what? It's probably now. Are you seeing it now? Yes. There we go. Okay, yep. so I need to change from a window, probably, to... Did you do it? Doing an incognito thing? Yes, it is incognito. I had to, to... Will it not let me share incognito? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> try it again. Uh... How do I... How do I get it to share? Oh, here we go. Well... That's what I want. Okay. Let me try this. Okay. Uh, We're back. Can you, can you edit that out? <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, uh, I'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So there's the sign in now. Oh, look at that. It's very much like, whoa, this is my login. I recognize this. This is not a bad guy. And so then I'm able to, you know, put the password in and so forth. So, and then we have the multi-factor. So I don't need to actually do that, but this, just so you can see what customization does and, you know, with the benefits of it, not only does it look nice and, you know, it's, it's, it's nice if they can see, you know, logging into your, um, with your logo and that kind of thing, but it really does have some serious um, security things behind it. Why you really want to do that. Nice. Okay, so since we're kind of in the, the same area here, uh, there's one thing I wanted to point out because the last time I checked, this was still by default turned on, um, and that is the calendar sharing. Uh, most people don't probably want in their entire all appointment information shared. So this by default is like this. So I always come in here and just do the, you know, free busy times only. And so that's just something, it's a little thing, but um, it's just now, something. What do you mean by that? So if, if, because if nobody's looking at your calendar, but you, why does that matter? 
Well, this is for sh ex external sharing. So if you're wanting to share with people so that they can see, you know, how to schedule appointments with you and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I just, uh, I think that's a little, you know, I think it should be the other way by default. And last time I okay. checked, it was not. So if I want to, you know, sneak out and go to lunch and I don't want Kim to know, <laughs> if it's just busy, not where yeah. I'm going. Exactly. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So that was one other tip that I thought of when I was in there. And then, um, oh yeah. So for, we talked about Intune and that's kind of like what we were saying. That's almost a whole other series in itself. But for anybody who's kind of interested in dabbling in Intune, um, there is a really good way to do that with what's called the um, deploying Windows and cloud configuration. Now, I would obviously suggest that you do this, if not in your own tenant, but even a demo tenant like what I have here. Um, but at least it lets you, you know, play around with it. And if you go here to the troubleshooting and support section, and then um, let's see, then help. Oh, I'm sorry, guided scenarios. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so under the guided scenarios, deploy Windows 10 and later in cloud configuration. And you go through this wizard and let me show you what it configures. It's kind of a little, you know, wizard in a few minutes, you will have a ton of policies and all these things that normally would have to be set up manually, you know, each policy. And then you could go through and kind of look and see what those look like. Um, these are all, you know, in tone related compliancy or configuration policies, and it saves you not only, I mean, it is a time saver, but it's also great for somebody who's wanting to see, like, what would it look like if I actually did a full blown in tune deployment and what are those kinds of features and, and things like that. So after you go through that deployment of this, this cloud configuration wizard, you would have all of these policies and everything set up in your tenant to go back and poke around in and look at and, and see. It's just a, it's a, a really nice shortcut and way to see how that's done. Now, is this basically the scenario where, let's say a client wanted to send a laptop to a new user that is out of state? where normally I'd have the laptop shipped to me, I'd set it up, get everything going, then ship it to the user. Is this something where you can ship the laptop to the user, they get it out of the box, they sign in with their company email address, and then it goes through and configures everything? Yes, you would have to do this part or something similar first, either manually, you know, or like this. And then you would also have to go a step further and set up the Windows Autopilot um, specifications for that device. And what you could do at the time, you know, that you're, you're purchasing, you have to put the hardware ID and, and those kind of things in. But yes, then they could have the, you know, complete out of the box experience where they turn on the machine, log in, and then everything here that you've configured um, shows up there basically. Okay. So they can't just like run to, you know, the box store, pick up a laptop and then go. You actually have to approve that device by getting the Well, technically they could go to the store, not that you'd want them to, and get a device and log in to Azure AD and the device would be Azure AD joined, but it would not technically have gone into autopilot. Um, after it's been the way I usually set them up, if they're, if they're Azure AD joined, then they actually get ingested into autopilot so that if we did have to do a refresh on the machine, then they would already be in autopilot. But to, to actually get them into autopilot from the beginning requires that additional hardware interaction. Okay. Cause that, that's exactly what I was thinking. I don't, yeah. I don't want them to think, oh, I'll just go and get my own computer and log in and I'll be good to go. I mean, it, yeah, well, chances are if they did that, it wouldn't work because they would have gotten um, one that was Windows Home. Of course. <laughs> that's uh, of course. Or in S mode. Yeah. Oh, yes. Don't get me started on that. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think, 
yeah, those were the things I was wanting to show. Is there anything else you want me to show before I stop sharing my screen? I, you know, I just was asking about the logo and you went above and beyond. <laughs> so I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. But I mean, the organizational <laughs> settings, uh, that's all nice to know that, you know, a lot of that stuff can be uh, configured. Yeah, and there's even more, you know, the, the way you, after you get everything configured um, in, in all of the various options, you know, when your client, you know, wakes up their computer in the morning, it'll say, you know, log in to blah, blah, blah company. And, you know, it's it, it's just a really nice feel, um, just kind of a is aesthetically pleasing and kind of, I think, elevates you in their eyes as far as what you're able to deliver for them. Sweet. Very, very sweet. Well, Giles, uh, thank you. This is very informative, and I think we've given people a lot to think about and consider. If if you have not started your move to the cloud, <coughs> like me, uh, it's time. Yeah, I think it is. It's right. uh, it it offers. There's a lot of benefits. Uh, security being one of them, which seems uh, ironic. You know, a lot of people think that the cloud would be less secure, but I think there's a good argument that in a lot of cases, it's more secure. So. Yeah. All right, once again, folks, uh, like I said, if uh, you have got this video out of order, go back and listen to sessions one and two and get the full experience. And if you have questions, if you have comments, obviously you can go ahead and email us and our information will be in the show notes, but I would encourage you to come back to the live show that we are doing Wednesday, July 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll have some live interaction, take questions from the chat, and respond to any emails that we've gotten and uh, see where it goes. But uh, look forward to that. Giles, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That'll be fun. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this first series of Chats with a 365 Guru starring Lady Di, Diana Giles. <laughs> Didn't think you'd get away with that, did you? <laughs> that's only for Tom Bull, because, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he'll, he'll actually watch the show because you're on. He doesn't really watch any other times. <laughs> well, I have helped him with Microsoft 365 um, tenant have. setup, so maybe he will watch. I don't know. All right, and maybe we'll get some more in the future. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for either watching or listening. And stay tuned for other series like this that we do. Listen, this is actually, I think, what our community is all about. Being able to help each other, share knowledge, and assist in helping us all get to the next step. And again, G Giles, thank you very much for doing that. And look forward to doing the live show with you and seeing you out and about in the community. That's right. <laughs> All right, folks, that's going to do it. Uh, we'll be back here soon with some other stuff. Join us July 5th. And until then, holla.